so much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media Interview, sponsored by 1-800-DIAL-DJs.com and recorded live from the world's new new media capital and hometown of actors Angela Bassett, Patrick Wilson, and Monica Raymond, St. Petersburg, Florida. If you've ever watched ABC's romantic dramedy, Ugly Betty, you know that Betty's boyfriend, Henry, will always be the one who got away and came back and got away again. The actor who plays Henry is Chris Gorham, a busy young man who's a husband, a father, and host this week of Acme Saturday Night on January 30th. You can watch the online comedy TV show streaming live uh, at www.acmecomedy.com at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. And you can find Chris Gorham on Twitter, where he has been certified as the real Chris Gorham. Uh, so, that said, Chris, welcome to Mr. Media. Hey, how are you? I'm, I'm doing okay. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. I got some sad news just now. Apparently, um, Ugly Betty was canceled today, which has really bummed me out. Uh, you, you know what? I, two minutes ago, my wife, who works at a newspaper, sent me... Uh, the variety story, and it, I was going to ask you, and I just it's bizarre yeah, timing that we're talking now. I know. I know. Uh, I just I just told my wife. I said, "Oh well, this is great. <laughs> just about to get on the phone." Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, how, how do you how do you respond to that? How do you feel? It must be awful. Well, you know, it's um, I, I yeah, I feel I, I I feel bad for for everybody still on the show. I'm, uh, you know, I'm sure. Uh, I know Silvio originally you know, wanted to do, wanted to tell the story in in five years, but um, uh, you know, I mean, they, uh, on on the bright side, they've had a really good run. They've had it'll be four full seasons, and um, thankfully, they're getting the opportunity to um, to wrap up the story. So um, at least the audience will get a proper ending and not be left with a cliffhanger like is so often done. So. Um, so that's the bright side, but um, but yeah, I mean, I feel bad for my friends. Is it? Yeah, you know, I was going to say it's kind of like you know losing a member of the family. I would think. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It's it's you know it's not quite the same as uh, you know a family member dying, but um, but no, uh, no, I understand. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll keep it in perspective. But it is, uh, but yeah, no, it, it was sad. It was, I was, I was, uh, I was sad to see that news. I was hoping that. Um, with this new time slot that uh and uh, you know uh really a reinvigoration of the show this season i think that the episodes this season have been have been really good and i think the fans have been really happy this year um i guess there just weren't quite enough of them it has been a wacky season there's no doubt about that uh <laughs> the uh yeah. the uh the the two the two uh the, the sisters thinking they were pregnant at the same time and yeah uh all the uh, switching of jobs and responsibilities. Yes, folks, I have actually been watching the series. Yes, I'm a, I have a I have a 13 year old and my wife, and they they I think they've got two of them backed up right now on the DVR. So if anything's yeah. happened in the last two weeks, don't don't tell me. But I'm current through the end of the I year. I won't. I won't. <laughs> um, do you, so so how did you find out? I, I told you how I found out. How did you find out? Well, actually, I was just on Twitter right before. Um, uh, and I found out uh, from Twitter. I think the first place I saw it was the Hollywood Reporter's tweet. But um, um, a couple people, it looks like, as I was scrolling down, picked it up before, <clears throat> um, uh-huh. or at least tweeted about it. So yeah, that's how I found out. Uh, I see. You've, you've, I was, I was just wondering. Let's see how current you are. And 13 minutes ago, you, you retweeted it there. Sure enough. Yep. Uh, and uh, hey, if anybody's interested, uh, Chris is starting his interview with me four minutes ago. Um, <laughs> boy, this immediate this immediate world is really something, isn't it? It, it really is. It really is. We've already, I think, we've already um, gotten really excited about the new Apple iPad and have now moved on to something else. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I know when I I started the day, that was the all excitement, and now, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> Betty's going away. Yeah. Um, well, you know, Chris, did you before you got this word? Did you have any in- inclination? Were, were you uh, going back this season? Did you know? Um, you know, I, 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 I didn't know, and, and I don't know. I suppose that there's still time for me to go back and do something if that's what they want to do. Um, my my time's running short because I'm about to start production on my new show, 
um, which is called Covert Affairs. It's going to be on USA Network, I believe, this summer. Um, oh, it's a CIA show starring Piper Perabo and and uh, myself. Peter Gallagher's in it. Uh, Kari Matchett. Awesome. Um, yeah, and it's it's from uh, uh, the producers on the same producers from uh, the OC and uh, Providence and the showrunner that they just brought on. Um, actually, was the guy who uh, started out with Ugly Betty in its first season, and uh, and uh, um, Grey's Anatomy, Jim Perry. So um, it's a really good team. I'm really excited about getting to work on that show. Um, I would love to go back and do something for Betty, but uh, time is is running short, so I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Wow. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you have uh, appeared in, and I actually have your IMDB page in front of me, and it was fascinating to look through here. Um, you know, I, I'm going to tell you the show that I'm that I most liked that you have been in and that you had a regular yeah. role in. It may, may may surprise you. I was a big fan of Out of Practice. Oh, me too. I love that show so much. <laughs> that was, yeah, that no, was, I'm not uh, surprised. I, Anybody who's seen it. Um, but it was really, it was a really good show. Yeah, I mean, if, for people who haven't seen it, it was, uh, it was Henry Winkler, it was Stockard Channing, it was Paula Marshall, and it was Chris, and and it was just like, I mean, yeah, and, what a and great, Ty Morello, who's so, on, like killing it on Modern Family right now. Right, exactly. Oh yeah, Jennifer he was. Tilly was on that God. show. I mean, yeah, the yep. cast was incredible. Yeah, Jennifer Tilly played uh, Henry Winkler's uh, second wife, and it was yeah. Oh, yeah. It's such a great show. Um, and, uh, see, I was going to open today's show talking to you about that because that was I love that show and I'm a big Paula Marshall fan. Although, yeah. I have to say, Paula has killed more shows, or, not not intentionally, but she's been <laughs> attached to a number of shows that just have not made it out of infancy. And um, I'm so happy for well, that. Well, I mean, show. In, Paula's, in, yeah, in Paula's <laughs> defense, um, almost every show never makes it out of its infancy. So. Right, so right. I would, you know, I would we, say it's much more of a testament to how talented she is that she kept working and always had a new show to go on to. Um, yeah, that uh, well, whatever that reputation was, it's it it, it has to be buried now because the show's been on for two or three years now. I don't know. Two, yeah, I think the Jane yeah. show they're in their second season. Gary yeah. Unmarried, that's the name of it. Yes, but, yes. So I got to ask you about I got to ask you about Paula Marshall, and I know people who are listening to this either live or um, uh, in the archive or, or want us to will want us to go back to uh, Ugly Betty, and I will in a second. But I got to ask you, yeah. Paula Marshall on TV is such a gorgeous looking woman. Yeah. Now, you, I know that you're a husband and a father, but come on, <laughs> tell me. No, Paula is a very good. Paula is a very good friend, and she's gorgeous. She's 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 beautiful. She's smart. She's funny. Um, you know, she's had a baby, and she's still like smoking hot. So, um, you know, like my wife, um, Paula just has <laughs> that it. <laughs> yes. Well, if you are friends with her, you tell her she's got a she's got an open invitation to come on this show anytime. Okay, I will. Anytime. And but but I have to say that I'll be staring at a picture of her at the time. Um, <laughs> so 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 now I'm, I'm in that position. I want to ask you: look back for me at Betty and and tell me what some of the highlights for you were. Um, you know, I mean, like most jobs, it's what the, the, the some of the best stuff is always kind of the, just the personal you know working relationships that you have with people. Um, that job came about because I'd worked with Silvio before on uh, Jake 2.0 mm-hmm. and um, you know they'd had trouble casting this part that was supposed to recur for about four episodes and so he just called me and asked me if I would do it um, so I came in and um, met America and we got along great and, and um, so we decided to go ahead and and uh, you know I mean the best thing about my experience on that show was just you know how you know this thing that was supposed to last for 4 weeks turned into this great 2 year gig where I just you know had a blast um and really was able was had total freedom to create you know this character because they didn't really have an idea of what they wanted it to be so I just made up this this guy and um you know just did things physically and with my wardrobe and and uh um just made choices that I was, you know, never really allowed to make on other shows where usually it's, you know, they just kind of want you to pay yourself. Um, and this guy was not me. So, um, <laughs> so it was fun. 
yeah, we had a really good time. And America and I got along great, and we still got along great. And um, So, yeah, it was a really, really nice two years. Is your sense, I mean, my sense is that, that Henry will always be the, the great love of uh, Betty's life, that, that it just, I guess it wasn't meant to be, but... Yeah, well, that's kind of how we thought it was going to be. Uh, uh, you know, the way that he, um, the way that his storyline wrapped up, I, I don't think was how uh, uh, they, meaning Silvio, um, you know, we kind of intended it to wrap up when we started. Um, you know, things changed along the way, and uh, you know, they worked really hard to find ways to keep us apart because, um, you know, it, you know, it was really good when we were together, but. I think at some point um, there was they they put so many obstacles in the way that you know the baby in particular then just made it um, it, was just, it was just too much like you know because cause you love Betty so much and and when you start to think about who you want her to end up with you know it's as an audience member even myself you know I I, I don't I didn't know that I wanted her to end up as the mom of someone else's kid you know what I mean um, yeah. As honorable as that is for that character in that world, um, you know it's not not really the ending you you would hope for her. You know, like you kind of want the fairy tale ending for her. Um, mm-hmm. um, but that being said, I think you know that, that those two together, um, you know, in their prime was was pretty great. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that was you know I, I'm. I mean, you're, no, look, you're savvy enough to have a Twitter page and be on there regularly. Do you uh, have you read, you know, fans' notes about Henry and Betty over the years and followed, uh, you know, what the fans wanted? Um, occasionally, I try not to look at that stuff too much, honestly. Um, just because, you know, who <laughs> like the, the fans kind of want what they want when they want it, and you know, it's, and um, <laughs> so I find sometimes I don't agree with the fans and. And then, uh, then it's just upsetting. Um, uh, so, so yeah, no, I don't, I don't uh, pay much attention to uh, blogs and things of the shows that I'm on. Um, just there's really no good can come of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you know, another thing, like a great thing about Betty, just for me personally, was just uh, you know this thing that was supposed to be four weeks turned into really like the biggest part that I've had in my career as far as you know, what it's done for me, like the, just the publicity and the other gigs that have come from it. I mean, um, just as an example, like this last year, I did, I played the lead in three different independent films, um, you know, and I have this new show and, and uh, you know, largely uh, it has to do with, with Betty. I mean, getting the opportunity to do what I did on Harper's Island, which is a complete 180 degree difference from Henry Grubstick on Betty, um, I think also came from um, having done Ugly Betty. Um, hmm. So, you know, however things, you know, ended uh, for me on that show, you know, I'm I'm very grateful for um, for all that I gained from it. Well, it's interesting, too, how you, know, you started off as the, the quiet, unassuming uh, accountant on the show, and then, you know, later, when, la- late episodes where we see, as, as a matter of fact, the picture that we have on... Uh, on uh, Mr. Media is you and Betty uh, looks like you're sort of dancing. You're in a, a white T-shirt. You're yeah. all buff looking. And I mean, I, I'm <laughs> sure that being able to look that way and, and be presented that way has probably opened up a lot of doors for you that being uh, Henry the accountant maybe did not. Yeah. Well, you know, it was, uh, I, I mean, it was it, when they, when they wrote that, it was always, you know, when they, when they first wrote that scene where I was going to be in my underwear, um, you know, I think part of the idea was always that, you know, I mean, they knew what I looked like and, and they wanted to have some fun with, um, you know, the, the, that, that contrast between, you know, what's, what's underneath the sweater vest and, um, you know, and, and the idea that, you know, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. So yeah, that was, uh, um, that was fun. Uh, how do you think, uh, America is feeling today? Um, uh, knowing well the show's coming to an end but i don't have to wear the damn well of course the braces i think are coming out anyway but you know i yeah. don't have to be ugly betty anymore do you think there's some feeling of relief on her part oh i don't know i wouldn't speak for her she's uh she's very well spoken so i i i don't know i haven't talked to her since 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 i got this news the last time i spoke with her it was just yesterday actually because she's um she was in Sundance uh, with a boyfriend who uh, wrote and directed a movie that's in competition there. So, um, so the last I spoke to her, she was very, 
um, you know, very happy and excited about that film. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I don't know how she's feeling, but the, I mean, there, I, I imagine there must be some mixed feelings, but, um, yeah, it's tough. It's always tough. It's tough news when something that's been your life, you know, goes away. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, Anna Ortiz and Tony Plana were on the show with me just a couple weeks ago. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah. And it was literally the day after, um, uh, Michael Osiello at Entertainment Weekly had dropped this, uh, purported bombshell that they were talking about, uh, getting Betty together with, uh, Daniel on the oh, show. Oh, yeah? What'd they say? The the season. Well, uh, so there, there was talk about this, and so I asked right. each of them, uh, what they thought. And they each had very different opinions about this. Um, mm. Uh, Tony, I guess, was uh, uh, very much up on the. Um, I hope I get this right because I, I, you know, I, I didn't, I, I didn't have enough time to go back and listen to it now that the news yeah. has changed about the show. But yeah. one of them was very much in favor of it, and one of them was very much against it. And I think you, you know, I, as you, your character would certainly have a, an opinion, a statement. <laughs> how do you think? Henry, how do you think Henry would feel about the idea of, of Betty and Daniel getting together, especially if that's the way the season, the show, wrapped up? Well, I got to say, you know, I think Henry still loves her and will always and, you know, at the, at the, at and he's a good guy, so uh, I I think for him the most the, the paramount thing is that Betty is happy. So, you know, if at the end of the show she ends up with Daniel and it makes her happy, then I think that that um Henry would be fine with it. Would you prefer to come back at, in the, at the end of the last episode and be re- reunited with her, and the two of you go off into the sunset? Your character. Well, I would. I would love. To, I, I'd be happy to go back and and uh, help wrap up the story any way that I can, as as long as it serves the story. Um, you know, and and uh, so yeah. I mean, the, you know, at this point, whether she ends up with Henry or Daniel, I don't know. I don't want to put myself. Like, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they're not hey, this is, listen, <laughs> well of course not of course not, but this is, you, know, you know I don't really care um, <laughs> yeah it's like All right. you know, they can do whatever they want um, just but I, well, I, I do I do hope for a really and and I'm optimistic that, that the ending of this show is going to be really great so no matter who she ends up with I think uh, I think it's going to be a really great ending and I think that um, uh, it, there will definitely be people who are really upset no matter who she ends up with. <laughs> well, let me, uh, let me, let me change gears on you for a minute. Let's talk about yeah. your other show. And this is probably why you, you feel the way you do and that you're not, you're not sitting at home without work to go to. You've got a exactly. new gig, covert affairs on USA. USA has been a, an incredible place for launching, uh, shows the last couple of years. Uh, yeah. I know burn notice is a regular in our house. Um, uh, 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 uh Royal pain, uh, mm-hmm. World Pains, uh, Psych. I mean, it just they do such a great job with the shows on that network. What can you tell us about Covert Affairs, and who do you play? Um, Covert Affairs is a show about the CIA, mm-hmm. and um, it is about uh, Piper Parabo's character, who is kind of um, uh, similar to like a Clarice Starling or um, Jennifer Garner's character in Alias, where she's um, she's being brought into the agency. She's brand new. Um, learning the ropes. Um, she does, she's not exactly sure why she's been brought in, and there are, um, you know, she's not being told the real reason why she's been, been brought in. Mm. Um, but she's here, and she's she's very talented. She's working very hard. Um, I play um, a blind um, agent at the CIA who becomes um, her friend and kind of the guy who is ironically showing her the ropes. Um, <laughs> there's a there's a, a a line in our first scene together where where it, I, I say just that um, blind guy showing you around the CIA insert ironic joke here, um, <laughs> and uh, it's a uh, it's a really it's a fun show. Actually, I I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen the pilot. I'm, I'm going to see it on Friday. But um, uh, from the script and from what we shot, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's it's very like if you've seen the shows on USA, then you will be familiar with. Um, the tone of this show, I think this show takes what they've been doing to the next level. It's it's a little bigger. There's more action, um, but it keeps that light heart um, that I think uh, uh, attracts people to the shows on the network. Mm. Uh, so it's it's got that humor. It's got the drama. It's got some action. Yeah. 
Exactly. All those all those things that people do look for on their uh um on their USA network shows, I guess. That's right. That's right. And you know, it's a, and it's a challenge for me. It's something one of, you know, one of the things that that drew me to the show was, you know, the challenge of playing something again, you know, very different cuz um you know, playing somebody somebody with a physical disability like um like being blind uh is is tricky and, you know, so it's it's going to be a real challenge to pull that off um week to week and make it convincing and and uh you know, cuz this is a guy who was a, who was special ops in Iraq uh and was uh was injured and uh, and lost his sight because of that. He wasn't born blind at something. So it's this uh, you know this very traumatic thing that happened to him that, that now he's been through. Uh, he's kind of gone through the fire with it and come out the other side and is completely functional and and um, you know contributing in the way that he can at the CIA, which is you know he's kind of their their tech guy. So we've got all these great like really cool um, gadgets where these these active Braille keyboards and and he has. Uh, his his cane is is uh is like a laser cane it's like this this slightly uh it's this really high tech uh device that he carries around with him that you know takes kind of that that what that cane function it does for um people who are seeing impaired and and uh takes it to the next level so he can not just things that are in front of him but he can um sense the the distance of things that are away and not just on the ground but up and down and the size and shape of things and um helps him get around so um, you know, it's great. And Piper's fantastic in it. Um, hmm. you know, so, and like I said, there's a I, great you, team behind it, so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting started. Were you much of a comic book reader as a kid? I was. Well, I, I guess a moderate comic book reader. Moderate. I still have some. I've been char- holding on to them for my boys. <laughs> this character remind you of any particular character? Because one comes to mind for me. <laughs> um, well, it's funny. Yeah, I assume you're talking about Daredevil. Of course, yep. Yes. Um, um, you know what? That's funny because that hadn't really come up. But what did come up when we were talking um, in the uh, pre-production meetings is Zatoichi, um, who was the blind samurai in those in uh, these old uh, kung fu movies. Oh, because, right. Yeah. Because what was very important for me is that I didn't want this guy to become a punchline. Like, it's okay for him to be clever and for him to be funny, um, but he's not like he's not the computer geek. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. He's not the guy who you like. This guy, he was special ops. Like this, this guy's dangerous. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think the plan is is that we're going to uh, um, work that in somehow. I mean, he's. Uh, I don't know if we're going to go so far as he's got a a sword in his cane, but um, <laughs> but you know, he, he's he's not. Uh, he he's a nice guy, you know. He can be easygoing, but but he does not suffer fools. And uh, you know, I think like Zatuichi, like he can play play up his blindness when kids are around, and you know, for a good laugh. But uh, um, you know, but if an adult um, tries to take advantage of him, they better watch out. <laughs> well, it sounds great. We'll look forward to uh, catching that uh, with big USA fans. And of course, I have to talk to you about the main reason that you're here, which is that you are hosting. Uh, Acme Saturday night this uh, yeah, Saturday. Yeah, what am I excited uh, about? I, I heard and, that you uh, you did very well at the uh, the first open read. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you heard that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. They've got it's a, it's a really funny group of people over there. It's um, I mean the setup. I, I didn't really know what I was walking into, um, and it's you know it's very like the the format is very much like Saturday Night Live and and. Um, you know they had a lot of funny skits to choose from, so we had a really hard time paring them down. And um, it should be a good night. It'll be a good show. Uh, have you done much live theater? Well, growing up, I mean that's that's all I did when I was when I was a kid. Um, and then uh, and in college, I was a theater major. And then after college, I did a couple plays. And and then I didn't do any theater for a while. And a couple years ago, I went uh, I went to New York and did um, the Spalding Gray Stories Left to Tell. Uh, off Broadway for a week, uh, mm. and that's it. You know, it's because for me, uh, I've, I've been married and for ten years now. We just had our ten year anniversary, and and uh, you know, we we have kids. Our oldest is is eight, I'm about to turn nine. So, um, live theater is hard to do for a family guy because mm-hmm. um, it doesn't really pay, and it takes a lot of time. Um, and you know, thankfully, I've, I've been busy. Um, working in film and television, so 
Um, I love live theater, and I'm really excited about Saturday Night is the short version of that story. <laughs> uh, will there be any references or any skits relative to Betty? To Betty? <laughs> Are you kidding? Of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the opening is that, that they wrote is really, really funny. Um, it, uh, it, it involves Betty, um, but does not limit itself to Ugly Betty. It also brings in another popular show that's still on the air. Um, I don't want to give away the secret, but, um, <laughs> but anybody who's, anybody who, you know, is an avid television watcher and watches Betty and, and, uh, the other popular shows will, will, will get the reference. It's really good. Can you uh, give us? I, I, I interview a lot of the, the hosts for uh, Acme Saturday Night. Can you give us a, an out of context line uh, that you'd be doing Saturday? Um, not off the top of my head. Oh, no, not off the top of my head. They just sent me the revised scripts, and I haven't had a chance to look at them yet. I can try and pull them up real quick. Let's see. Do you think, as you do that, I'll ask you this. Do you think uh, yeah. there'll be any uh, last-minute changes considering this uh, last-minute cancellation of the of Betty? Oh, I'm sure there will be. I'm sure there will be. They'd be fooled not to. They're too smart. Um, yeah, I'm Yeah, I'm bummed about that news. Way well, to bring me down again. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Chris, let me, let me ask you a question. Uh, we've got a, yeah. someone calling in. I, 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 we, I'm not able to screen this. I suspect they're calling in about Betty. Are you willing to take one call before we say goodbye? Sure. All right. Let's see what we got. I have no idea. Uh, hi, do you have a comment or question for uh, Chris Gorham? Me? Hi, Hello? do you have a comment for, for Chris? Sorry. Sorry. Me? Yeah, you. You. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, how does it feel that um, being part of one of the biggest shows and now having it be canceled? Um, I, I am, I think like I was saying earlier, I'm, I'm really happy that I was a part of it and, and, um, and I feel bad for my friends who are still there and, and work so hard day in and day out. And, um, you know, I know that they would have liked to have another year to wrap things up, but, um, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. So, um, I'm happy they get to finish the season. That's really important. I mean, just, just for the fans, if nothing else, so that everybody, so that they get the closure that they deserve. But, um. But yeah, I'm I'm bummed. I just got the news right before I started this interview, so um, I haven't had much of a chance to think about it. But yeah, it's sad news. Oh, and I have another question. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, when does when do you, does Covert Affairs be on uh, USA? When is Covert Affairs coming on? That's a very good question. I don't have an answer because they haven't told us yet. They've told us they've told us probably this summer, so maybe July. Um, but oh. right now they're um, they're waiting to uh, they have one other pilot that they've made so um, so it'll either be the summer or the fall I think they'll roll the, roll them out probably some some way similar to how they did with Royal Pains and uh, White Collar this year um, mm -hmm. so probably summer but I can't tell you for sure you have to uh, but the best way to keep up is just follow me on Twitter and um, as soon as I know you will great well uh, caller thank you very much for calling in and uh, Chris was very kind of you to uh, uh, take the call, and, and particularly to do this interview under the circumstances. I mean, odd timing. Uh, you know, yeah. neither of us planned. So uh, it was very gracious, uh, gracious of you to uh, live up to the commitment. But uh, as I was telling somebody, that's what us old married guys with kids do. We, uh, you know, we look at the world a little differently than the single guys do. That's right. It's true. <laughs> it's really true. It's really true. Well. well uh, no, it's been let me let me remind people. Yeah, uh, let me remind people. You can catch uh, actor Chris Gorham, who you know from Ugly Betty and Harper's Island, and of course my favorite, Out of Practice, uh, on Saturday, January thirtieth. He'll be doing live online comedy sketches during Acme Saturday Night. If you're in L.A., you can go to the Acme Theater. You can see it live. But wherever in the world you are, you can watch it streaming at acmecomedy.com. Show starts. 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Again, acmecomedy.com. Uh, Chris, we'll look forward to seeing you in Covert Affairs, and maybe as that show gets closer, if you'd like, uh, come on back. Let's let's spend 30 minutes talking about that show and what's going on there. Um, okay. And thank you so much for your time today. It was very gracious of you. No, no problem. All right, good luck, Chris. Thanks, you too. All right, bye-bye.
And folks, for more interviews with your favorite TV stars, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with the stars of Scrubs, More Ugly Betty stars, uh, Parks and Recreation, Friday Night Lights, Castle, and many more. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman or facebook.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate when you give up a little piece of your day and share it with Mr. Media.